Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Aviva Braun. I'm a serving as an incident meteorologist on the Cameron Peak Fire, serving with the Southern Area Gold Team. My day job is a, as a meteorologist serving at the National Weather Service in Cheyenne, Wyoming. And um, we've had a lot of weather, and this fire has gone quite uh, on quite a long time. Um, and so I just want to talk a little bit about the weather that we've seen in the last week, what we're going into in the next week or so, um, and maybe we can touch on a little bit of what we've been seeing over the last few months that's made this fire go on for so long. Um, so if we can take a look at our satellite imagery together. Right now, everybody woke up this morning, saw snow on the ground. We had snow over the fire. Um, looking at the satellite imagery right now, um, the areas of bright colors, those are high-based clouds. Those are the cloud tops. Um, moving across the screen. The white sitting um, uh, across the landscape, that's the snow that we had fall. Um, so you can see this system moving on out of the area, dropping to the south and east, and the, the snow that fell across the fire being left in its wake. Um, and across the fire, we got about two to three inches total across uh, most of the area. There were some areas that did much better than two to three inches um, across the southern uh, area of the, of the fire in the foothills, we actually did get um, six inches in uh, one or two places. And that's just because they had better convective availability. But the system was able to drop enough towards the south to tap into the moisture um, that came off of the Pacific and draw north into it as it came on through. Now we've been in this progressive pattern um, and you can sort of see how the, the incoming lows, it's a progressive pattern. And right behind this one, moving on out of the area, this area of low, low pressure, um, behind it, we're going to get some winds with it because we're going from uh, wetter and colder air into a drier, warmer air mass. And you can see it's really clear behind those, those clouds that are moving on out. So tomorrow, we're looking for uh, windier and um, warmer and, and dry. And then behind it, in line with that progressive pattern, we can see this, ne this next area of low pressure moving on in uh, associated with these high clouds. So that's the next chance that we have. This is going to be passing through uh, the fire area on Thursday. And as you can sort of see, it's not really as well developed as this one. You can sort of see the, the low signature, the, how it's kind of churning as it moves. This one doesn't have that. Um, and because of that, it's not going to be able to pull as much uh, moisture off the Pacific into it. So we're not really expecting quite as much moisture with this, uh, if much at all. And then looking um, forward even, for, uh, even more into the forecast, um, this area of high clouds off into the, Pacific, the northern Pacific, that's the next system that could affect us, but most likely what it's going to do is going to clip the area. It's going to come across uh, eastern Wyoming, um, maybe clip the northeast portion of Colorado and drop to the south, um, basically creating winds for us. And as you can see, the, each one of these lows are a little bit further north um, than, the, than the last one. And that's because we have this area of high pressure that's going to be building in um, across the west. And all of these low pressure areas are going to ride along the outside of it. Um, and so that's what we're looking for in the next week. Um, and I'm going to move on to our uh, model forecast. So I don't want to get too complicated with you guys, um, but this is 500 millibars. So basically halfway up through the atmosphere, it looks at the big picture of what's going to be coming in uh, across the area. Um, and 500 millibars basically translates to 20,000 feet high above in the atmosphere. And that's where we start thinking about, OK, what's the overall signature? What's the overall pattern? And um, what I'm going to be looking at is one of the three models um, that, I, that go into the uh, long term. So we have an American one called the GFS. We have a European one called the EC. And we have the Canadian model. Um, and 
they have a whole bunch of members that go into it, and if we get one single solution from all the little members that are in uh, inputs that go into each one, then we know that we're on the right track. And when all three of these different models show us a similar solution, then we have higher confidence in that overall pattern. Um, so I'm going to show you one of the three, but basically all of the models I'm looking at are showing this overall pattern, which is why I have higher confidence that we're going into a drier, windier pattern uh, in the next week. Um, so if we come here, um, this is the European model. Um, and this one, uh, let's start all the way at the beginning. Um, so this was this, that was last night, and you can see this dip here. That dip, that's that low pressure area that moved through that brought all the snow to the area. I'm gonna move on forward. Um, this is this evening, so you can see the low moved out towards the southeast as you saw over on the satellite imagery. And here's this area when it um, bows outward um, towards the northern part of the conus. That's the high pressure area moving on through. And then here's that system coming in Thursday. So here's where the fire is, right where uh, my X is. Um, so Thursday, this is Thursday evening right here. It's gonna come on through. There's really not a lot of moisture coming in with this guy, with this guy as it comes on through. And then moving forward, moving forward. Now we're in this area of high pressure and it's just gonna sit over um, the whole west and we're going to be caught on the northeast side of it which means we're going to have winds coming out of the northwest and moving towards the southeast and for all of you who have been living here for a very long time you know that when we're stuck in a northwest pattern we get winds um, so here we are in this northwest pattern and we're in this high pressure area um, which means that we're cut off from all of our um, dry uh, all of our moisture and it's going to be dry. So I'm going to keep on moving on through. Here's that clipper system that's going to kind of clip the area, um, not really bring anything because it's moving around um, the, the, the high pressure area and it won't have any kind of moisture tap with it. And then here we are, we've come to the end of the pattern and we're still in um, that area of high pressure, so we're still in that northwest pattern. So uh, warmer than normal, um, most of the time that little clipper will, will drop our temperatures, but will still be windy. So the overall pattern is dry and windy. Um, and that's what we're going to be seeing as we go into the first week of December. So that progressive pattern that we've been in going back and forth is going to end and we're going to go into that drier pattern. Um, Looking at what we've had, the conditions that have gotten here, why this fire is on day 104. Um, first, I want to show you the drought monitor. Um, so our fire is right here in Larimer County, and that area of red is in what we call extreme drought. Um, and so we just haven't gotten a lot of moisture, and we've dived into this period where we're just super dry over the, over the area. You can see it in, in the grasses. You can see it um, if, if you have a farm. You can see that in how everything is growing. Things are a little bit more difficult and a little bit more flammable. Um, and basically, the reason that we're in this is we have what's called a La Nina event that's going on. And it bec it's become increasingly strong as we've gone through the summer into the fall. Um, and La Nina for this area means hot and dry and windy. Um, and that's exactly what we've gotten. We haven't had anything that's broken that pattern. We've gotten little clips. We did got um, that foot of snow in August. We got another foot of snow in October. We got a few inches last night. Um, but as you guys know, as soon as the the moisture moves out of the area, the winds come, there's downsloping winds, which is a warming factor, and, and it just evaporates everything. Um, actually, it's called sublimating. It doesn't even go through the liquid phase. It goes directly from solid to gas, and it just goes away. Um, and so nothing's sticking, um, which is the main problem. If we could get some snow and it could just stay there, that would be awesome. But La Nina has been basically cutting us off, off from that opportunity. Um, so just to uh, look at how strong our high, or excuse me, our La Nina is, 
Um, each one of these bars is a few months time. So this first bar is November, December, January. The second one is December, January, February, January, February, March, and so forth. And if you can see, we're at 100%. We are definitely in La Nina. Moving to December, January, February, still in La Nina, almost 100%. And you can see that it progressively comes down, but it's not really until you get into that February, March period, um, March, February, March, April, that we're starting to really see that La Nina is gonna come to an end and we don't become neutral um, until we get out here. And so that's, um, oh, um, into the summer, or sorry, excuse me, into the springtime. I don't want to push it out too far, um, but well, I can I can cut little pieces. Okay, we'll just keep rolling. We, we will probably want to wrap pretty soon. We're pretty going pretty long. Okay, yeah. um, so basically, last time we spoke, um, I was saying that I didn't see a season-ending event coming until December because of La Nina, and with how the the strength of La Nina, how what it's shown us, it's capable of doing, and how strong it is. Um, it might not be until January, even February, that we get something um, that is deemed a season ender. Uh, the good news is that we have a shorter window of uh, opportunity each day because the sun is not out nearly as long and the temperatures are getting colder, which also helps uh, decrease the heat. Um, so there's lots of different things, but th different factors that go into this, the, how long a fire can go. Um, but this is why we're here at hun day 104 um, and still with some fire behavior. Anyway, thank you for joining me today. Um, and if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Just plug them on in into the Facebook and I'll get with our PIO shop to help answer those questions for you.